What's up guys? So I've got Noah back from Veltrogen Peptides. A lot of you guys have had questions about these things. I've used the BPC-157, the TB-500, the DSIP, but a lot of you guys, there's a list and it's hard to know which peptide does what. So I brought Noah here to kind of walk us through it. How you doing, brother? I'm good. How are you, Chris? Good. good. So tell me about these peptides in general. Why why aren't they more mainstream? Because they're they're like a miracle drug, but it's weird that the that big pharma doesn't want them out there. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it comes down to either your general health or money, really. I mean, not to get anti-government, but we we both know that you know they don't want you to be healthy for free you know they don't want you to be doing these things um, without them benefiting of course so a lot of the reasons that these peptides aren't talked about or anything is because they the big pharmacy companies want to charge you a pretty penny for it or they just don't want you thriving on something that's super easy and has no side effects really Go ahead, beat the system, get your peptides, stay healthy, and stay off their expensive pharmaceutical crap. And uh, Noah's going to walk us through some of the basic ones. Uh, he's got a little list here, and he's going to break them down in a tier level. Yep. And uh, go ahead, Noah, you can start with BPC-157, yeah? Sounds good. All right, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and go into a brief you know, explanation of what peptides are, what the different ones do. I'm actually going to be doing a tier list today. So you'll see that. You'll see how they stack against each other. Um, S tier is going to be the best. Down to C tier would be you know, kind of a niche drug, not you know, widely used. But they all have their uses, and they all work well. Um, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and talk about BPC-157. So this is going to be the most popular peptide for a reason. Um, it's very commonly used. It's going right into S tier. A lot of you probably already know about BPC-157 or already take it, but a brief little introduction to it. BPC-157 is a synthetic compound made from gastric juice. Um, it's actually called body protection compound. And then BPC-157 is a small fragment of that that's responsible for angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels. Uh, and it also directly affects soft tissue growth. So it's going to aid in any sort of injuries or anything like that. Um, it reduces inflammation inflammation and heals soft tissue. So BPC-157 is going to go in our S tier, very popular, and it's going to work damn well. Um, the only side effect really you're going to run into with BPC-157, um, do have to disclaimer this because it is a little serious, but if you have or have had cancer, it's going to indirectly affect that and possibly help it grow. So if you do have any problems with that, I wouldn't run BPC-157. Otherwise, if you're healthy, you're looking good, there's no risk at all with BPC-157. Next up, we're going to talk about TB-500. So TB-500 is very commonly used synergistically with BPC-157 as it is also going to be healing your soft tissue and reducing inflammation. So a lot of you riders, you know, fighters, if you're having injuries often, BPC-157 and TB-500 is going to be the solution for you. Um, these two work very well together different pathways in your body to heal soft tissue. So if you have a torn shoulder, a knee injury, you're gonna be healed in half the time and feel fantastic. Next up, we're gonna talk about GHKCU. What this peptide is, is GHK, which is three aminos chained together with the addition of copper ions, um, which is gonna help your skin, your hair, it's gonna boost your collagen production, it has some wound healing properties, and it's also gonna reduce a lot of inflammation. GHKCU is very popular. Um, very synergistic with the other two actually as well. These three are commonly used in the glow blend. So they call it the glow blend because you're, you're glowing. You know, your skin, your hair is looking phenomenal. Your tissue is healing great. Your joints feel fantastic. So a lot of people use the glow blend. So all three of those plus the glow blend, we're going to put in S tier because they're very good. And I would say if you're starting out with peptides, start with either, three of the, either one of these three. Um, they're going to be very beneficial. Next up, this one's not a peptide, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it because it is the base of everything you use. Uh, it's going to be the bacteriostatic water. So all of this is is 0.9% benzyl alcohol mixed with sterile water. So this is going to be the solvent to all your solutions. You're going to mix it in with all the peptides, and that's how you're going to take it. Prevents bacteria growth. I mean, back water is an essential. We're going to put that in A tier. Next up, I'm going to talk about three peptides that are growth hormone secretagogues. So what this mean is, is, means is it's just going to influence your pituitary gland to release more of your natural growth hormone that you already produce. Um, so first up, we're going to talk about tesamorelin. So tesamorelin is going to di directly stimulate your pituitary to release growth hormone around the same time of day that you would naturally. So it's going to boost your natural system. Um, 
basically what growth hormone is going to do for you is improve um, your recovery, your sleep, it's got fat loss properties, and it's also anti-aging. So it's going to boost collagen indirectly, it's gonna do a lot of things in your body. Boosting it naturally through your pituitary is gonna be very beneficial. Tessa Moreland's gonna go ahead and go in our A tier. It's a pretty potent peptide and it's quite strong at boosting growth hormone. Next up, we're gonna talk about two that work well together and are popularly used in a blend. So this is gonna be CJC1295 Nodak mixed with Ipamorlin. These two work differently through different pathways to stimulate your pituitary to release more growth hormone. Ipamorlin is gonna work through your ghrelin receptors, whereas CJC1295 Nodak is gonna work directly on your pituitary. Using these two together, you're gonna to get the maximum output of your natural growth hormone to produce fantastic results. So I'm gonna go ahead and put both of these in A tier. Next up, I'm gonna talk about the GLP analogs. So these are pretty commonly used, um, very widespread. They are pretty popular. Um, we're gonna be talking about the semaglutide, terzepatide, and retitrutide. I'm gonna go ahead and break down how each of these are different from each other. So semaglutide is gonna be your first generation GLP agonist. What this does is it directly affects your pancreas to help your appetite control. It's gonna release insulin when your body needs it, and it's going to indirectly help with fat loss and um, Diabetes is what it's mainly used for. Semaglutide is gonna go in your B tier. I would say it's the um, strongest when it comes to appetite reduction, but it's not really gonna help with anything other than that. All it is is the GLP receptor. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and talk about terzepatide. So this is your second generation GLP. What this is, is the GLP-1 receptor, but also the GIP receptor. So what this is doing is also reducing your appetite, but the GIP is going to contribute to a little bit of fat loss and a little more insulin control. So your um, insulin is less spiked and more balanced when you eat food. This one's also going to go in B tier because it really is just an appetite re uh, reducer. It's not very strong otherwise. You will lose fat and weight, but I would say the next one is probably way better. So next we're going to talk about retitrutide. So this is your triple agonist. This has three different receptors that are similar to the other two we just talked about, but it's going to be even better. So retitrutide is the GLP-1 agonist, the GIP, but it has the addition of the glucagon receptor. So you're going to get the same appetite re reduction as the first two, probably a little less severe, as well as the GIP, so your insulin's nice and leveled out. But the glucagon receptor actually promotes your body to burn fat. And so what you're not going to run into is problems with bone density or muscle loss. This actually preserves lean mass while um, promoting your body to burn fat. So retitrutide is actually gonna go in the S tier for GLPs because of how good it is at burning fat while preserving your muscle and bone density. So you don't lose that. I mean, nobody wants to lose bone density. That's a little unhealthy. So retitrutide is gonna go in your S tier. These next six peptides I wanna talk about are a little more niche, so they're all kind of different. They're not in their own category that I would say. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is CMAX. So CMAX is a nootropic. This means it's gonna boost your mental state. Um, CMAX specifically boosts your learning, your um, IQ indirectly. It's gonna help with memory and um, memory formation. So CMAX actually upregulates your BD BDNF expression in your brain, which is directly tied to learning, memory, all these other things. So CMAX is gonna go in your A tier. CMAX is very strong. Um, you do have to take it daily, but it works very well and it has slight stimulating effects to help focus and attention. Next up is gonna kind of be similar to CMAX uh, in its own way. It's gonna be C-Lonk. So this is also going to go into the A tier. What C-Lonk is, is an anti-anxiety peptide. So it's going to directly affect your CNS, your central nervous system, and it's gonna promote your natural anti-anxiety properties in your body. So you're going to probably wanna take this one at night before bed. It's gonna help with your anxiety. It's gonna calm you and it's very relaxing. It's not very potent. It's not like a benzodiazepine. Um, it works naturally in your body to promote your body's natural anti-anxiety um, effects. So c -Lonk is going to go in your A tier. It's a pretty good drug and it ties back to C-Max. They're commonly taken together. Next up, we're going to talk about KPV. So KPV is mainly used for its anti-inflammatory effects and it's very strong. So 
Mostly, it's going to be used for the inflammation in the gut. So if you have any sort of chronic gut problems, IBS, IBD, um, KPV is going to help that a lot. And it's actually tied into our glow blend that we talked about earlier. It's commonly used with that because it's synergistic. Um, when you reduce inflammation in the body that's unnecessary, you're actually going to have help your body promote more healing. So that's why it's very commonly used with the other uh, three that we talked about in the beginning. So KPV is very strong. Anti-inflammatory, I'm gonna put that in S tier. Next up, melanotin-2. So melanotin-2 um, is a stranger peptide. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in our C tier. It's gonna be the only one in C tier today, and I don't want that to mean that it's the worst peptide. It's just very niche. So the main effect that people are looking for when they're taking melanotin-2 is tanning. And it actually works on your melanocortin receptors in your body, which are the same receptors that um, influence you know, skin pigmentation when you're tanning in the sun. So you're gonna get a, a, a tan exactly the same as you would if you were in the sun, but it's gonna be on your whole body. So it does have its um, application. A lot of people use it, um, sometimes bodybuilding competitions or just for general aesthetic, um, but it's gonna go in the C tier because it does have some risks and side effects. It's not very widely understood how it works, and so it does have some bad side effects. You know, it, it can act on your brain in different ways to cause, you know, different problems in your body. So I would do plenty of research before deciding if you wanna take that one, but it is commonly used and it works well and it, it tans your body. So I'm gonna put that in C tier just because it's a very niche and not very well understood drug. Next up, we've got thymosin alpha-1. So this is gonna go into your S tier. What this peptide is, is a, an immunomodulator. So what this does is it boosts your immune system. It's gonna be antiviral, anti-tumor, it's gonna be antibacterial, it's going to help your body heal um, from sickness, tumors, anything you might have. Uh, it also gets rid of seasonal aller allergies. Basically how this peptide works is it doesn't amp up your, you know, your body's immune system in unhealthy ways. It naturally shifts it into a more um, secure surveillance type, you know, looking at it's going to enhance uh, killer T cell production. It's going to subtly shift your body from kind of a weakened immune system to more enhanced ready immune system so that your body is um, able to fight off anything it may have. It's gonna be more fine tuned and balanced. So that's what this peptide is gonna do. So it's going into the S tier. Lastly, our final peptide that I'm gonna talk about today is DSIP. So this literally stands for Delta Sleep Inducing Peptide. So this means that when you are asleep and you're on this peptide, it's going to shift your um, natural sleep cycle from kind of a lighter sleep to a nice deep sleep. It's gonna help with your recovery, your rest, you're gonna feel more rejuvenated. I personally love this one, it's my absolute favorite. It's going to S tier. With DSIP, I found that if I slept seven hours on DSIP, I felt way better than if I slept 12 hours on not DSI, without DSIP. So this peptide is a game changer and it's going to indirectly boost a bunch of different cognitive functions in your body just because you're getting very restful sleep. And of course, that's gonna be very beneficial to your body. Thank you so much, Noah. I really appreciate the information. Now that I know that I want peptides, but I don't know, I, I've never, let's say I've never used needles before, it scares me. How do I get these and get them mixed? With buying needles, they're easy to find on Amazon, um, but actually mixing the peptide is a pretty straightforward um, thing. There's a lot of videos online. Um, hopefully we can, I can get one online uh, soon and show you exactly how I do my peptides. But all you're really doing is getting that bacteriostatic water, getting a needle in there, pulling the amount of that you would want. Usually it's gonna be one milliliter, two milliliters, or three milliliters. And then you're just injecting that into your uh, peptide vial, which is gonna be a powder, until it mixes into a, a clear solution, so. How do I know how much water to put in? You said one or two, or like? Right, so it's going to depend on which peptide you're taking. You're, prob you're gonna have to research, you know, what the dose you wanna do is. But for something like um, retitrutide, the common first dose would be like one milligram a week. So if you have a 10 milligram vial, you're gonna put one milliliter of water into the solution. So um, every 10 units on a needle is one milligram. So it makes it pretty simple. Um, it's just a little bit of math. They have calculators online. It's pretty easy to find. And then for dosing, you're just gonna wanna look at the anecdotal evidence or look up some clinical trials and see what the dosing um, they were using was. Okay, so I've got five milligrams of BPC-157. I've got the water. How much do I add and how much do I wanna take? 
So for the five milligrams, a common dose with BPC-157 is gonna be about 250 micrograms to one milligram. So with this, if you have a five milligram vial, you're probably gonna to wanna to put one milliliter of water so that every 10 units is gonna be your 500 microgram mark. So if you wanna take 250 micrograms, for example, once daily, you're gonna take half that, so you take five units on an insulin needle. And I know Noah's not a doctor, but he knows me really well. How much should I take with my shoulder, my injuries of the PPC? How many should I do that? Two times a week, three times a week with the, I'm gonna do 10. Right. How many times should I do that? So for you specifically, you have a lot of injuries that you need to heal, a lot of inflammation. Um, you're gonna wanna take a higher dose. So if you had a 10 milligram vial and you put one whole milliliter in, you're gonna wanna take 10 units a day until you're healed, really. So so daily? Yeah, so you would be, you would be taking about one milligram BPC-157 every day, which is probably like the maximum to high dose um, without you know crossing into... Are there any risks if I do too much? No. If you do too much, you're just kind of wasting it because it's just not going to be utilized. Um, you don't need a lot for it to be effective, but one milligram is going to target a lot of injury sites and reduce inflammation quite a bit. So if somebody doesn't have a ton of injuries and they just want to use it two or three times a week, is that okay? Yeah, that's totally fine. I mean, it's just going to help reduce your inflammation. Um, it'll probably help with your joints and stuff. Um, if you don't have injuries, you probably don't need to use it right now, but I mean, everybody gets injured. I tore my shoulder just doing random stuff the other day, and um, so it's good to have on hand, but it's not something you wanna use year round unless you do have those injuries. And now the deep sleep, indu or I'm sorry, delta-inducing uh, sleep peptide, I've heard different things. I've heard you do it five hours before you go to bed, an hour before you go to bed. Does it make you groggy in the morning? It does not affect any Thing about um, it doesn't make you sleep faster or stay asleep all it does is when you are asleep it's putting you into that deep restful sleep so it's not gonna affect your grogginess or anything as for when you should take it I personally find the best time is an hour before bed but it's going to act on your um, your circadian rhythm no matter what so if you take it a few hours before if you are uh, like an hour before it's gonna affect your circadian rhythm which is already it's already got its own clock. So it's, it's gonna know when you need to sleep in anyways. So um, once daily at night is really all the dosing you need with that. Um, it doesn't really matter exactly how close to bedtime you take it. So the other thing I noticed about getting peptides, Veltrogen is included in this, is it's not like a, a typical purchase. I essentially transfer the money to them and then I get my stuff shipped out. It's really weird. Can you break that down at all? Yeah. So. Because of the industry, this is a gray area market, so it's not illegal, but it um, they're not allowed to market things as human use. So all these websites say that they are for research use only, laboratory use only, um, because they have to stay compliant with law. So you can't say, you, you know, you can't reach out to a company and say, hey, I wanna use this, how do I use this? They're not gonna tell you any of that. So that's why anecdotal evidence, like, you know, how we talk about is totally fine, and that's usually how you learn stuff. But even with payments, a lot of these credit card processors, you know, they don't accept websites like that. So that's why you see a lot of websites with Zelle, with Venmo, um, even cryptocurrency, you're gonna see a lot of that stuff. But um, I know with Veltrogen.com, that's just standard practice, and, and they always ship my stuff out really fast, so. Oh, I have so much confidence in Veltrogen that I told you guys, if you order from Veltrogen and you do not get your product, you reach out to me, I'll pay you. Exactly. So uh, that's just the standard of the industry. That's just how they work. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time, Noah. Anything else you want to tell people? Um, that's pretty much it. Thanks for having me on. You got it. Thanks, guys.